Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. and I'm joined by the most Armenian man on the planet, Rich Stambolian. <laughs> if I'm the most Armenian man on the planet, we're all in trouble. <laughs> you you are not Armenian at all. You just you just I'm, like the last name in the culture. That is true. I'm half Armenian. I speak three or four words in Armenian, and that is it, my friend. You're you speak you are way you are the most armenian man on the planet you know what's funny i speak both dialects i speak mm -hmm. eastern and western uh but i do you think i'm like 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 i got a lot of armenian friends that like i grew up with playing church basketball but like they're yeah, yeah. really armenian you know uh, i you married know, an I've... italian puerto rican <laughs> you, you know go. i didn't <clears throat> I have no frame of reference for like any Armenian stuff. It's like you, your dad, and then my dad. That's about There's it. Like yeah, <laughs> three Armenians yeah. I know. Yeah, uh, I, you know, mm. it's there's like five of us anyway, and system of a down, obviously. Ah, so good. They they, they are very Armenian and oh, aggressive so, with their music for sure. Yes, guys, this show is all about professional wrestling. It's been a hell of a week. A lot of news to break down today. Collision was announced. The AEW Double or Nothing is on the way. Locations for Collision. Where CM Punk? We have a lot to talk about today. Rich, do you want to... Actually, I want to give a little plug. BTC Rich, everybody. Follow Rich. Uh, also, our friend, French Tony Khan, is on Twitter. What's the Twitter handle for, for Tony? I believe it is at French Tony Khan. It's at French Tony Khan. So uh, give him a follow. Maybe he'll call us. I know you're not a fan of him, Rich. Yeah, he's all right. He's starting to grow on me a little bit. He's starting to grow on you. Let's go into news. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, let's start with the sad news. Uh, superstar Billy Graham passes away at 79 years old this past week. And uh, I would say possibly the most imitated wrestler ever to a certain degree, right? Yes. Uh, let's think about it, right? Uh, obviously Hulk Hogan, right? We got obviously Hulk Hogan. We got obviously yeah. Jesse the Body Ventura. Yep. Uh, I would say Scott Steiner in a weird way. For sure. Right? Scott Steiner. Uh, very impactful. I mean, he was really like the bodybuilder of Jesse professional body? wrestling. Je I said mm -hmm. Jesse Ventura. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always get worried at the top of the show when it seems like this guy starts falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he gets he gets he gets really worked up to sometimes. He hears body and he got really worked up. You know, like you got to look at this guy. I mean, what a specimen, right? He started yeah. in bodybuilding, I think, in team bodybuilding in '61. Uh, he was like Mister Teen Universe or Mister America, whatever the competition was. Uh, wow. He was. I don't think he started steroids till like '65. Dave did a great piece. If you if you guys, I don't know if it's in the Observer this week, but Dave is a a total encyclopedia when it comes to these things and and he does oh, yeah. an unbelievable eulogy uh in the observer but you know dave has some great points you know at the time when he came around like he didn't wrestle till 71 right i think it was right. early 70s so he you know he was big into bodybuilding he was friends with arnold uh him and arnold were very close i believe arnold is the godfather to one of his daughters Wow. You know, he hung out with that Franco Colombo uh, uh, era of bodybuilding, all those guys, you know, and on Venice Beach, he yeah. influenced an entire generation of not only professional wrestling, but bodybuilding. People didn't look like him. Oh, no. I think also, like, if you look at the general lay of the land when it comes to professional wrestling, anybody that l was a big body guy that looked like they came from outer space, like like you said, Hogan, Jesse the Body, they owe everything to superstar Billy Graham. You know, Dave had a Dave had a great bit in uh, on the show when he was talking about him. Uh, we discovered that, you know, Dave got spartaned up that that wrestling is a work. He was 11 was years was old. Billy Graham? He oh. was 11 mm -hmm. years old and it was because of a Billy Graham finish to a match where uh the older kids told him like no 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 wrestling is fake uh, that oh, that stood out to me dave smartened up at 11 years old a 12 year old and smartened that, him up to the business and that's when he was like from this point forth i shall observe wrestling i shall observe all of this, <laughs> this uh really, really sad you know he made that comeback in the 80s yeah um you know, it wasn't the same. He was older. He was smaller. But 
it, it, it's it's an amazing you know what a what a what an influential person when it comes to professional wrestling. You didn't have to be a great wrestler, but man, if you look good, you get far. I, listen, I still think that's the case with a lot of guys. Yeah, I think so too. You know, if you got the looks, if you look good on camera and in front of a crowd, forget it, man. You're you're more than halfway there. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so passing, uh, sad to report, Billy Graham, 79 years old. Very interesting uh, ca- guy. I'm looking forward to Dave's report. AW officially announces Saturday Collision to launch on TNT. The show's going to begin on Saturday, June 17th. Rich and I were on top of this from day one. Since March. Yeah. Since March, we've been talking about this, and here it is. And I, you know, I told Rich when I was like, I don't want another TV 14 situation here. Even yeah, though no. I was right with the TV 14 stuff. I wanted to do my due diligence and hold and wait for all this stuff. And, and luckily for me, everything fell into place. But mm-hmm. there's some issues here. Let's go into this. Saturday, June 17, location to be announced next week on Dynamite. Mm-hmm. Saturday, June 24th in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Thursday, they're filming. June 29th, they're pre-taping it. At the First Ontario Center in Hamilton. Saturday, July 8th at in Regina, Saskatchewan. Regina. Regina? Regina. Yep. It's Regina. It's Reg- Regina. Yeah. I don't like how you're saying that. It is Regina. It <laughs> I don't like how you're saying up. that. Yeah. No, no, no. You're trying to get me in Regina. trouble. Regina. Regina. Uh, Saturday, July 15th in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The home of the greatest professional wrestler, Lance Storm. Saturday, July 22nd at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Um, you pronounced that right. I did, right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, interesting lineup here. On the poster, you had Miro, Samoa Joe, Thunder Rosa, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Andrade. Yeah, he's CM back. Punk- <laughs> yeah, Andrade's back. Um, Andrade apparently had no idea. <laughs> it's so he was like, hey, I'm back. <laughs> uh, I know that Punk wanted Andrade there, and I know that mm-hmm. Punk wants Powerhouse Hobbs to be presented in a, in, a main, in a big way, and I know the company's high on that, so I expect Hobbs to be a player on this on this show. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. On Tuesday, I tweeted that the announcement is coming any day now, which it was, which it still is. Yeah. Uh, while we were recording, we're live, pal. I get a text from somebody saying, "Hey, when you're off the air, call me. When you're off the radio, so you could tell you how how in touch this person is with podcasting." Mm-hmm. When you're mm-hmm. off doing your radio show, call me. Uh, it turns out they pulled CM Punk from the press release sometime between the hours of 3 and 4. Two, maybe 2.30 oh, and 4. I don't know. I have not been told anything regarding Ace Steel being the make or break in this situation. I, that, <laughs> I, I'm going to go based on the reports that you guys are going based on. But wild. It's it's like I think the rumor mill kind of exploded a little bit because it was the you know telephone, tele wrestler, tele podcaster, tele internet. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So um, I yeah. was just told he was pulled from the presser, and to me, I assumed, of course they're gonna pull him from the from the presser at ten a.m. They don't want to ruin the mm-hmm. TV show. Right. That may not be the <laughs> right. case. That may not be the yeah. case. Something happened. Then on Wednesday. CM Punk loses it on Brian Alvarez for for a reason I still don't know. It yeah. seems like they have some sort of underlining issue. I don't think Brian knows either. Um, and he essentially said like a lot of people are making stuff up and it's rumors and it's not true. Huh. Um, then yesterday a report came out through Fightful, I believe, and and somebody else, uh, um, Nick Houseman, reported that things are fine. Tony and Punk are fine. Things are fine, and it'll be coming next week. Mm-hmm. More cool. in, in more ways. I'm, I'm I'm filling in the blanks here. So I don't know. I don't have any yeah. firsthand account as far as Punk walking out and not doing it. I know that they had to reschedule some things for him, uh, some shoots and stuff. Mm-hmm. Somebody in AEW told me this. So I don't know. What do you make of this? Listen, I 
I think it's an interesting situation. I I don't know. I can't give too much credit to the internet on this, you know, because A, again, we look at this stuff and we're like, oh, it's a work or maybe it's not a work. And then on the other on the other side, it's like, why can't these guys just get it together? You know, I think like yeah. that's that's my personal take on it where I'm like, all right, I'm stop, I'm I'm starting to not care anymore. Why can't these guys just get it together? Uh, it should be for the fans and not some kind of ego trip, you know, because yeah. that's just what it seems like. You yeah, it, it it does take you out of it, you know. When yeah, you, yeah, when you sure. read this stuff, like it's 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 kind of exhausting to report it because you want it to be successful and you want everybody to get along because you're fans of professional wrestling. You know, like right. I don't I don't come in here with an unbiased journalistic viewpoint where I need to report everything. I'm like, dude, I, I'm doing this for fun, uh, and I mm. want every everybody to work out and be happy. I don't really I don't look at this as like one side. You know, exactly. You, pick you know, side. but that's the thing. And, you know, that's coming from, you know, you as a wrestling analyst podcaster, you know, where you would think that these people who are higher up on that food chain, like way up at the top, could just easily put their differences aside and say, hey, look, this is the deal, you know. But then when, when stuff like this kind of comes out, it's I feel like it's a double edged sword. You know, I always do think that. It's one of those like, hey, this story spread. We know who the mole is because we told this guy, you know, and then they get rid of that guy backstage. And that's happened a ton of times in both companies, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, so uh, who knows, man? Millionaires arguing about millionaire nonsense. Yeah. So Spunk was pulled from the ads last minute. Uh, I have seen the graphics with him on it. So have yeah. you. And I have. <laughs> I put that uh, shit on the internet. Yeah, Rich is making stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> I, make, yeah. I make shit up all the time. It's just to put it on the internet. Yeah. Uh, here's the interesting thing. This is according to Fightful. He was pulled from the ad last minute and he's still expected to return. But Ace Steel, rumored to be not allowed to come back into the buildings. <laughs> Ace uh, reportedly was rehired months ago and has been helping remotely. There you go. Okay, you know, I, I that's a curveball. But I do hear I do hear that they have to one of the stipulations of him being rehired is that they do have to wheel him into meetings like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> well, you know what though? The guy <laughs> does need some clean like a PR cleanup, right? Because that's all people think of him for now. Just like crazy, like, ah, I'm a biter. Yeah. Bites <laughs> kinda... ah, I'm a biter. Like that's what people think of A Steel now. And I don't Great think career. that's true. Yeah, he was in he right. had a great great indie career. He was a great trainer in NXT. And like now he's the bitey guy. What a what a what a fall from grace. <laughs> he needs, it happens, listen, listen, it he happens, needs to hire right? somebody to, to rehab this PR this image. You don't want to go down as the bitey guy. The bitey guy. <laughs> uh ACL reported that he was rehired months ago. Later, AWWBD made a statement saying that CM Punk is not affiliated with Collision. So I asked about this, and I think what happened here was it was possibly a, a freakout tweet or, or a freakout comment from PR mm -hmm. at Warner without really knowing the full story. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into that comment. Yeah. So Things change all the time, especially in the world of pro wrestling. Yeah. Uh, fascinating stuff. This, this, this story is not stopping. <laughs> it's really not stopping. It's, it's turning into, uh, you know, it's such turmoil that you either think like, well, listen, these guys are just working everybody. Right. Oh yeah. And they're purposely, yeah. they're purposely alluding to things and leaving things out to get people to talk like CM Punk showing up at raw Showing up at mm -hmm. Impact, showing up at New Japan. These, this is not just you know. I he could want to just go and say hello, but he also knows that people exactly. are going to talk about it, and, and it adds relevancy to his return, which he's a, he's smart, a guy. smart guy. Yep. So we'll see. We'll find out. You want to go into the next one? Absolutely. WWE's Nick Khan confirms an India live event open to a but and also open to a potential SmackDown change of night uh it looks like wwe will go back to india in september uh no word if it's going to be a ple or maybe just like a special show why don't they know? do it they could do a ple they do great in india huge uh, listen there's a billion people there how could you not 
Yeah, they need to bring Kali back though, because I feel like whenever they did those shows with Kali, he was like, he was More like the Stone ever. Cold. Yeah, like, like he was like the national hero. What? What were they in India when? Uh, do you remember when Kali came out to save gender? And he took the uh, title belt from him, and he held up the title belt, and all the photos in the. No, I don't know if it was in India, but I don't think it was. I think it was a pay per view. It was. It was in it India. Was. It I'm was in sure India. Was. Yeah. That was awesome. So hysterical. <laughs> Jinder, he, he takes the title from Jinder, like pulls it away, holds it up, mm. and that's all you see in the papers. It's great. No, you know what it was. World title. Smart. I know when it was. It was during that Punani uh, prison. Punani came. Punjab- say, Punami prison what are you match. Talking about Punani uh, prison did match. On the pa- what? Yeah, the one they did. The one they did Wait, at, MG, uh, at that a little bit. MG. All right, goodbye. Pre- yeah, the Punjabi <laughs> prison fight. Yeah, this guy's a this guy's stuff He's drunk already. Dude. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> <He's laughs> watching pornos <laughs> from the eighties. It's the nineties, no, dude. Get it right. Uh, one, of, one of my favorites, <laughs> Punani prison match. <laughs> 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 so Nikon is open to go be- go into India. Great, uh, I think I think they'll do great business. I know that they want to travel mm-hmm. more to international markets. They want to run these PLEs in yeah. big stadiums. India obviously has a ton of cricket cricket stadiums they could run. Mm-hmm. Thirty thousand, forty thousand people they could pack in the building. Absolutely, they could Absolutely. do something really yeah. cool. Seth yeah. Rollins was spotted on the set of Captain America: New World Order. What do you make of this? Movie? I'm excited about this. Are you? Uh, I, listen, I did you watch uh, Captain America and Falcon? Or, I did uh, not. Falcon no. Winter Soldier. No, a lot of fun uh, establishing Falcon as the new Captain America. Big time, cool stuff. Uh, so that's the new Captain America movie. You know, you have um, Anthony Mackie as Captain America. Uh, Seth Rollins is could be a member of the Serpent Society, which is kind of cool. They're probably not going to give him much face time, but it's still cool to see him in like a Marvel movie. Second, uh, second Disney connection, right? Because Sasha was in Mandalorian. Uh, technically, I think it started with Batista, right? Oh yeah, it did start with Batista. Yeah, I keep forgetting you he know. exists. How could <laughs> how could you forget Batista exists? Because he's purple in that movie. He's green. <laughs> he's green. Okay, he's green <laughs> in that movie. See, did you I don't watch see color. the Guardians? Movies? No, you put color on somebody. You like you're like uh, like what happened? If you, right. if you came and, in here all green, you, I would not write for Obama. You vote. You tried to vote for Obama for a third time. Four times. <laughs> Four times. <laughs> Four times. <laughs> Jeez. Go ahead. All right. What else? Uh, I don't, I can't understand what the last bit, the last bullet oh. point means. Oh, the new merger. There you go. Is that okay, it? There yeah. The new merger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, WWE and UFC's merger. The company's going to be called TKO Holdings. I feel right. like people cool. knew that though. Their symbol was TKO. All right, you know what? That's a that's a that's a great name. Makes total sense here. You want to go into SmackDown and Raw? Yeah, uh, Roman Reigns essentially benched the Usos, the Usos, in favor of him and Solo Sokoa challenging for the tag title that Night of Champions. Sammy, this I think this is more news. Sammy is going to Saudi Arabia now because the ban is lifted per a new treaty. Yes, he's allowed now to travel to that country. Wild, huh? Wild. Politics have gotten uh, have, have corrected the wrongs, I guess. Uh, so nuts. Uh, Asuka misted Bianca Belair with hot pepper in the mist, setting up a match for Night of Champions. Cool. Um, Liv Morgan got injured in the tag team defense, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, raw stuff. Mustafa Ali won the Battle Royal to become the number one contender and will now face Gunther at Night of Champions. J.D. McDonough w- was featured, even shown backstage, being watched by Finn Balor, setting up a possible new member for Judgment Day. All right. I can see that. Sure. Yeah. Cody said that Brock Lesnar was just sent in his way and even a- and even asked how was his face. What? How was his face? He asked how his face well, was. Because Brock, uh, <laughs> Brock got effed up at Backlash. Remember? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. His face. Finn Balor, Damian mm-hmm. Priest beat Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn when apparently Paul Heyman hired everyone to interfere, including the rest <laughs> of Judgment Day and Imperium. The entire the classic, classic uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Undertaker casket match with Yoko finish, right? Everybody comes in. All the heels come in. Not one baby yeah, exactly. comes in to save you. <laughs> Interesting. No friends. 
No friends. Baby faces have no friends. Current card for Night of Champions. This is next Saturday, 1 p.m. Are you coming over? Uh, I can't. It's my nephew's birthday. <gasps> yeah. Man, what a great... We bring the TV out. We grill. I know. Would have been wonderful that afternoon. Ruined now. Ruined. I know. I know. Undisputed Ruined by my old nephew's birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship on the line. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn defend against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. I think Roman and Solo should win it. Oh yeah, give them all. I think the that belts. would be that would be amazing. <laughs> and then you you'll finally get Sami pinning Roman in the future, right? Yeah, you could get that. I think yeah. that's a fine finish. Raw Women's Champions Bianca Belair defends against Asuka. Brock Lesnar, Cody Rhodes. World Heavyweight Championship Tournament Finals. AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. They'll have a fantastic match. Trish Stratus yeah. and Becky. They're doing this here. I thought they'd do it at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Intercontinental Championship. Gunther defends against Mustafa Ali. All right, cool. I'm really digging where they're going with Gunther. Oh, me too. Me too. He needs... But you know what, though? I'm so used to big Gunther. Big boy it, Gunther. Uh, He's thin, very svelte thin. now. He's he's getting bigger up top. He's growing on me, you know. I think they want to. I think Triple H is like trying to get him to like bodybuild more, you know. Yeah. Um, and it'll work because like, yo, he looks awesome. That big red coat, you know, very menacing. Yeah. Let's go into dynamite. You want to go into this? Let's do it. Uh, Wardlow confronts Christian Cage. Uh, he dared Cage to spit in his face. Uh, but Christian Cage ended up low blowing Wardlow, which led to Luchasaurus choke slamming him through a ladder. Uh, you know, my favorite part about this feud is uh, down and dirty Christian. Yeah, man. He, he, uh, what heat. Yeah. You know what? Vince was right. Nobody likes that guy's face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like his face. Rat. Um, so they're apparently leading up to a ladder match for double or nothing. Yes. Right? Is that what if I'm, am I? I just am got. I, right I just got. Yeah. I just got a really big piece of news, and I'm not. I'm just, guys. This show. Uh, it's not a serious show. Rich and I sometimes take sidebars here, and this is a sidebar. Uh, very interesting story news. I just was told, and in, 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 I'll tell you later. Can you break it? Is this a scoop? Can no, no, too news? early. I need to confirm it, but uh, I'm I'm surprised a little bit. Nothing with AEW. Nothing crazy. Most people won't care. Just Rich and I are into this. All right. Ooh, oh, can you text me real quick? It's about the Punani prison match. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's happening. <laughs> it's, it's, it's happening. Back, 20, it's happening. Let's come back. 2023. <laughs> oh, we're getting boy. it. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen defeated Lee Moriarty and Big Bill. Uh, Darby applied a Sia headlock on Moriarty and got the pin to get in the head of MJF. I like Big Bill. He's, he's, he's kind I, of adjusting. Do you think this guy should be taking Canadian destroyers left and right? No, I don't think so. I think Weird, he, should right? a, like, he should be a giant. I think he should be a, a big heel. Yeah, yeah, same here. I mean, they could do a lot with him. You know, like presentation yeah. is everything. And I feel like they need to put more presentation on Big Bill. You yeah. know? And I, you know, listen, I, I love WWE and I love AEW, but that's one thing I do feel like AEW lacks in is that big presentation feel, right? Listen, WCW had the same problem, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. they had the same problem. The same guys in WCW didn't feel big. Chris Jericho is a great example. We loved Chris Jericho mm -hmm. in WCW, but the second he debuted in WWE, it was a different human being. That was a much bigger star immediately. You know what it is? It's it's just it's literally a little something called like razzmatazz. You know, Raz <laughs> it's just razzmatazz. Because like look, like look at that. Like Chris Jericho debuting is a perfect example of like you didn't do anything super crazy. You had a countdown going on for a few weeks. And then this guy shows up in like a sparkly shirt and crazy hairdo yeah. and cut the promo. And everybody's like, yeah, legend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sammy defeated Exodus prime. Um, FTR attempt to get revenge on triple J. Okay. I love this. Here you go. Can you talk about this? Cause I, I know this, this is, this is all okay. you care about. <laughs> Karen Jarrett is now part of the story where she low blowed cash. This led to a double guitar shot on FTR. Jeff Jarrett, I mean, I can't believe this man. He's such a cartoon. All of them are cartoons, right? Sotnam mm. is a cartoon. Sanjay is a cartoon. Yeah. 
Jay Lethal's a cartoon now. I, I would expect, I think at the pay-per-view, he'll do Black Machismo. I think he should. Oh, my God. You know, and Jeff Jarrett is still, you know, uh, Brian said a great on Observer Radio, uh, on, on uh, Brian and Vinny. He's still doing the same 1994 gimmick in 2023, and it's working. Oh, absolutely. Timeless. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he's, it really he's is such timeless. A great, he's a great piece of shit. He really is. What, it, it's so what, good. What do you guys think of Satnam Singh going through the uh, uh, tables? Like a big guy just bumping like that. I never yeah. want to see big guys go, go through, through like that. Like, I don't want to see big guys falling on stuff, you know, just because it makes me cringe a little bit. Or it's like, yo, keep this guy healthy. I, I never want to see Santam Singh on a ladder. You don't want to see And then he like, came like back a... and he tore his shirt off. That was great. <laughs> that was cool. That was fun. Do you think if, if Andre was around for ladder matches, do you think they would have had him in one? <laughs> oh, I can you imagine that man would've... climbing a ladder? Well, listen, think about that era of like. Those guys are too like if it's Andre Hogan, <laughs> Big John Stud. I don't want to see. Like, I don't want to see the, Hogan. That's the era you're talking about. Like you don't want to see these guys on a ladder. I feel like it would just you know injury after injury. Yeah, that's not going to work. Never did a ladder match, right? Huh? Hogan never did a ladder match, right? No, mm. no. I, 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 you know what? <laughs> I, I could have just seen like if Yoko was around in the late '90s wrestling in WWE, they would have set him up in a ladder match and made it. You know, like. That he can't oh. climb the freaking ladder, of course. So the, he like teasing the crowd, looking around, like trying to climb that ladder. What a reaction that would get. Well, you know what that we know what they would have done is if it was like late nineties, it would have been Yoko climbing halfway up the ladder and then doing a bonsai drop on somebody. Oh man, I'm into this. Like through the ring, through the ring, just goes right into the, into yeah. into the parking garage underneath. <laughs> Like that would work. Yeah, I I don't think I'd ever want to see like Hogan in a ladder match. I feel like that just you can't do it. You know? Well, I don't lucky, see... lucky for you, you will never see it. You never know, man. One one more match, brother. One more match, unless the AIs do it, which is possible. I've never done a TLC match, brother. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, and the same thing with Kane when they put Kane in those ladder matches. I'm like, I don't want to see this, man. I no, I hated it. it. I hated seeing him in that. Uh, so Karen Jarrett, part of the story. They gotta bring Dixie. Yeah. Dude, why don't they show? Why doesn't Dixie show up? I think it's. Oh my three. god. Yeah. Do you think that would be, that's like the next step of like Tony Khan's like impact obsession? Where yeah, yeah, yeah. Dixie Carter returns. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm into that actually. Tony Storm, Ruby Soho defeated Britt Baker and Sheeta. Originally, this was a six man, but Jamie Hader is not medically cleared. Sheeta was very over in this match. Soraya ran several yeah. distractions. Soraya, 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 Soraya. During yeah. the match leading to Ruby spray painting Brit's eye, Storm Zero for the win. Now we also got this. Roderick Strong versus Chris Jericho in a false count anywhere match. Roderick Strong is 39 years old. That he's looks like a million wrestling. bucks, man. He looks like a, he's been wrestling forever. Uh, Chris Jericho, been wrestling forever. These guys brawled everywhere. Uh, I, I enjoyed this. I'm not, I'm not crazy about brawl matches, but I very much liked this match. It was fun, man. It, it was a good match. It was a lot of fun having them go backstage. And it was interesting seeing them like in the arena, um, where they were both kind of looking around, go like in the hallways. They, it seemed like they were both looking around going, all right, what can we break here that we're not going to get in trouble for? And it was like a whole lot of nothing. They just moved some stuff around <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, we can't break that. Now let's yeah. go into the thing. Let's go outside. But it was good. It was so much fun. Yeah. Adam Cole attacked Jericho and led to the pin in a garden. Jungle Boy Jack Perry defeated Roosh. Jungle Boy got a schoolboy flash pin with a handful of trunks. Ah. Are we going to get naughty Jungle Boy? I think we're going to get anything it takes to win Jungle Boy, right? I think he should go backwards. I think he starts in the jungle, then he becomes forest boy, mm -hmm. then he becomes park boy, and then he bec he becomes you know suburban, suburban mm -hmm. boy, and then he becomes mm -hmm. city boy. I think if you if you turn him heel and make him put him in a suit and make him city boy, that would be amazing. <laughs> city boy Jack Perry, I'd be okay with city yeah. boy Jack Perry. <laughs> Listen, Will City's Washington, like a he's a friend Perry. of mine. He's he's listening to this. There you go. He he knows. No, they banned him. They they said he can't listen to Matt Men anymore. He can't listen to Matt Men anymore for their <laughs> stupid ideas. 
City boy Jack Perry. He shows up and he guess what? He's wearing a ninety suit like his dad did. Oh yeah, yeah. European t-shirt. cut, re- European cut yep. pants, absolutely. t-shirt absolutely. and blazer, turtleneck yep. and blazer. He's gonna show uh, up looking like a real Jerry Seinfeld. So good. wacky Jerry. Uh, maybe a heel turn. You know, this kind of this kind of changes the the my interest in that four pillars match. I'll tell you that if Jungle Boy's the one that turns. And he helps MJF win? Absolutely. Not bad. All right. A little yeah. edge. I'm interested. That's how you lead that's how you lead to City Boy. Yeah. After the match, uh, Renee tried to interview MJF. He ended up just <laughs> slapping the microphone out of her hand. Interesting. Switchblade Jay White defeated Ricky Starks via disqualification. Used a chair on White right in front of the ref for a rare DQ. In this company. All right. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with Jay White. Yeah, same. Don Callis tries to explain turning on Kenny last week. He said that he was a victim in the story. And he's mm-hmm. the one that did everything to get Kenny where he is. Omega came out and tried to get past security, but the BCC attacked. The Bucks came out to help. And this led to a big return reunion oh, of Adam. So good. Adam Page reuniting with the Elite and challenging BCC in an Anarchy in the Arenas match. Very good way to end the show. I got chills. I got chills during this segment. They did the return of Adam Page perfectly. I feel yeah. like it was also their version of like Endgame where Kenny had the clearly because Kenny had the shield I like Captain America and he had the uh, he had I've never seen people pop this much for a broom before by the way and like he when he took it. the broom when he took the broom out of the trash can, everybody went nuts. There's all the cleaners back. And then Adam Page throws the broom to him and they go bananas, you know? Yeah. Great, great ending. I like Adam Page with the eye patch. I feel like I got to hand it to him. Must be hard. A lot of eye shit has been going on in wrestling for the past three years. And I think it's nuts. Dude, conjunctivitis. It's, pa- it's going around. <laughs> Everybody's got a case of that pink eye. AW Rampage. Tonight. John Moxley, mm-hmm. Claudio, and Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta take on the best friends in Bandito. I don't know why Bandito's part of that group. We should, we should move them somewhere else. We hear from the Hardys, the acclaimed and daddy ass take on the varsity athletes and Aria Davari. Jade Cargill, open challenge for the TBS title. And who's Dustin facing? Bishop Kwan? Yeah, who is that, MJ? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you put it in the notes. I missed well, this I part. just copied on what they uh, what they announced. I just don't know who that is. It's probably Ring of Honor. He's with Ring of Honor. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Oh, you know, I know who that dude. Is. Okay. Yeah, me too. I just okay. needed a little reminder. Big jacked exactly. up dude. Good body on him. Good look. Yeah. Yeah. How old is he? How old are you? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? These are questions That's I ask what... all the men that I see half naked. That's what you do. That's on your sheet, no matter what. You're That's like, on my how sheet. Old are you? How tall are you? How much can you bench? Andrew's old school. He's, he's late 90s. He loves asking people how much they could bench. Yeah, how much can you bench? That was how a late 90s bench? question. Do you remember how often people would ask? like, bro, how much do you bench? Yeah, how much do you bench? Cares. Yeah, nobody, nobody cares. Shit. AW Dynamite for next week. So far, we have the Lucha Bros defend the ROH tag titles against Claudio and Wheeler Yuta. Awesome. And here is the Dynamite lineup. Anarchy in the Arena match. The Elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club. Also, by the way, Danielson is helping with creative for that Saturday show. Very cool. I'm into that. AEW women's title, Jamie Hayter defends against Tony Storm. TNT title, Wardlow defends against Christian in a ladder match. AW International Championship on the line. Orange Cassidy defends in the 21-man Blackjack Battle Royal. AW Tag Team titles on the line. FTR versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. And I great. And the AW World Championship on the line. MJF defends against Sammy Guevara. Jungle Boy. City Boy Jack Perry. Darby <laughs> Allen and Sammy Guevara. <laughs> City boy, this is gonna be so good. That's how I can't wait for MJF to be like, "Hey, listen, let me give you the upgrade. Here's a suit, here's some loafers. You get a city boy, the city boy Jack Perry." <clears throat> uh, what else we got here? 
Why'd you delete these messages? You're not a fan of uh, Australians? Bishop Kang. Yeah. You're not, you're not a fan of him? <laughs> no, not at all. All right. Where are we going? Uh, where are we going? You want to do Q&A? Uh, let's do some Q&A, guys, if you want to... you want to uh, run through this New Japan card real quick? We have time. You want to do that first? Mm. Yeah, let's do it. Where is it? It's the very bottom. Oh, New Japan Resurgence <laughs> card, Sunday, May 21st. Mm. This is a pay-per-view. New Japan Strong Women's Championship Tournament Finals. IWGP World... IWGP United States Championship Number One Contender Tournament. Tanahashi versus Will Ospreay. John Moxley, Wheelie Yuta, Shota Umino versus Okada, Ishii, Rocky Romero, friend of the show. New Japan Strong Championship. Hikaleo defends against Kenta, Street Fight Fred Rosser, and Juice Robinson, Zack Sabre Jr., and Bad Dude Tito. Versus who is it? Carbonario and vi Virus? Mm hmm. Virus, not virus. <clears throat> New Japan Virus. Strong Women's Championship Tournament first round. Willa Nightingale versus Hogo. Is that am I doing it right? Momo Kogo? Yeah, so. okay, there you go. That's yeah, close yeah. enough. Uh Mercedes Monet versus uh Stephanie Vacker. Yeah. Vacker. Vacker. Oh <laughs> that that sounds a little French. Uh when are you getting your LASIK? Soon. Thank God. <laughs> so I can't see anything. This is a, a reminder whenever you go through these, and I'm like, oh, yeah, when's Andrew getting LASIK? <laughs> well, the only thing is I got to do these zoom-ins. And you see me doing one of these every time. I'm refusing to wear reading glasses. Uh, interesting card. All right. I'll watch. Maybe I yeah. will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll watch it live. Maybe I won't. Uh, Tanahashi versus Osprey is going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But listen... Moxley coming back again with uh, Shooter. That's what I want. That's what I've wanted for three years. And Wheeler Yuta. That's kind of, that's what I think is fun. You think uh, Wheeler and uh, Shooter are going to fight for the attention of John Moxley? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Something like that. All, All right. right. Are we Guys, ready? If you want, yeah, I think so. Guys, if you want to get your question to the top of the list, feel free to super chat as any amount is cool. Uh, we want some good questions. Just send in some some really meaty questions this time. Uh, go nuts. Nothing about the ring ropes, please, though. Yeah, please. All right. Let's see here. Uh, I know we got a couple of super chats here. We got one from Kyle Masters. Boys, um, hope you both are having an awesome Friday. Thanks, bud. Did that come on the screen? No. I got to fix it. Hold on. T time out. <laughs> <laughs> Did a nice big intro for that and everything. <clears throat> I am tired today, by the way. I'm exhausted. Oh, oh God! Here, what happened? Mm. Did it work? MG, MG took over. Hold on. There we go. There you go. All right. Mm. There we go. Oh, Boys! Sorry. Mm. There we go. Well, both of you have an awesome Friday. Thank you. I will try. Thank you very much. Hang on one second. All right. Let's see what else we got here. MG, did you highlight the Super Chats? I know we got a couple. I did. You can also go into the queue and get them. Okay. Yeah. Can you throw the next one on the screen? Because I can't seem to find it. Oh, yes. No, oh, that was quick. You. There there we go. Uh, excluding ex-WWE guys, which AEW talent do you think has true star level potential? In my opinion, the pillar story is exposing that only MJF is on that level. Interesting question. Very interesting question. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I think, you know, it's tough because you have, I guess you would count Adam Cole as like an ex WWE guy, right? Adam, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Kenny, Hangman, Hangman for sure. You know, I think like, um, I would have loved to see if, if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for all this pillar stuff and the elite stuff, I would have loved to see a Hangman MJF feud. You know, I think those yeah. guys could definitely bring out like the best in each other, you know, yeah. but I like I, I like that it's kind of separate right now where you have the BCC stuff and you have 
the pillar stuff, I don't really see the pillar stuff lasting too long. But I do think it's something that they can continuously come back to for the next five years. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I got to sneeze. I'm so sorry. Go for it. Oh, God, that was miserable. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, you, you look at you look at them, you know, obviously, Kenny Hangman. Uh, if you're going like the younger guys, you know, who do they have? Uh, Jay White. You know, Jay sure. White is obviously a big star. There's something special about him. Will Ospreay, if he becomes full time in AEW, it would be oh, yeah. fascinating to see. You know, it, it's and also these guys are young, so you got to develop the time. That's why that second show is so important to give these guys like Will Hobbs. Hobbs could potentially turn out to be a tremendous name in pro wrestling now that he has a you know, there's going to be a little bit of a microscope on him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we saw that with Wardlow very quick. No fault of yeah. his own, but I, I think things just got jumbled when he when he the crowd was really hot into him. But you know, he's another one they could do something with. So they they have opportunity. It's just you know proper booking every week. Uh, here's a good one. This is from Bachelor Three Thousand. Wow, I believe this is the first Ask Geek <laughs> in the show's history. Wow, MG, you got a question? I Don't see that. Yourself- <laughs> don't pat yourself on the back too hard because <laughs> I don't want you falling over and not get to your microphone. Uh, world class championship re- was world class championship wrestling big in your area? If so, do you have a favorite wrestler from the promotion? I actually do. Um, so it was because it was on ESPN. Um, I believe it was four o'clock on Wednesdays. If I do, when I got out of school, I'd come home and uh do my homework and i'd watch that and bruiser brody really stood out to me and early scott hall scott hall was a caterpillar mustache <laughs> so those are my two wait i got a question for you yes you went to school <laughs> some sometimes <laughs> you, you can read time <laughs> wow uh, <laughs> All right, that's that's great. I like that hashtag. Ask Geek if you want to ask. If you remember, a question. do you guys remember that Punani uh, prison match in World Class? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember when that happened? Wild, you can get away with a lot of stuff back then. It was crazy, oh, yeah. even on, on ESPN showed, um, basic cable. They just showed like uh, what was that Pam Greer movie called? Like uh, Women in Prison or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from. Um, Acknowledge me four five four six five. Hottest wrestling take you currently have right now. Hottest like like. Oh man, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I, I I you know there are moments that I think this whole thing is a is a nice elaborate conspiracy. Tony Khan, oh, no. CM Punk, oh, no. the Young Bucks. Uh. I, I <laughs> it's a good, it's a great Alex Jones, by the way. Um, uh, lizard frog man not coming on the air following this interview. Uh, I, I would, you know, there's something in me. There's something very little. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is. Maybe this is like hoping, right? I think this is just like positive wishes. I would say that maybe a little bit of this CM Punk, Tony Khan, and the Elite stuff, may, you know, like a little bit. It's just like 2% in me makes me want to think that it's all a work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is and from, we need uh, to investigate 311. I think we need to do that also. <laughs> uh, this is from K Black. Andrew, how is your hip? And a lot of follow-up hip questions. from. The oh, person. okay. Uh, my hip is doing better. Uh, I do, I do stretches every day and I, I've made like a 90% recovery. Nice. Uh, follow up from the same person. What caused it? Can you sprint and exercise and still perform? I could still perform. Mm -hmm. Rich knows. Uh, I, I could sprint. I could exercise. Uh, I fell on my ass and I fractured my hip. That's what happened. And I walked around like that for six weeks. I had no idea. I slipped on water. My oh, daughter brought water a- into the bedroom yeah. at 11 o'clock. And I was like, what are you doing in here? I'm like, go to bed. And I got up to close the door and I just whoop like a banana peel. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. 
Uh, this is from the Llama Whisperer. Hashtag ask Matt Men. When it comes to spicy food, Ooh. how spicy is too spicy for each of you? I love spicy. Same here. I love spicy, but th- there is a level where it's no longer enjoyable. Yeah, I can handle run of the mill spice like a ghost pepper or something like that like a splash on like you know food or pizza i like spicy food but yeah i i i didn't what is your conspiracy theory i want to come back to this but what is your hot take in pro wrestling who mine yeah my hot take um uh I have a couple. I think the one that I always tell you about that I say on the show is that I really, honestly, I really don't care about the punk stuff because it's it's millionaires, uh, boo yeah. face arguing with each other. You know, I think that's it. Like, I tell me, give me a reason why I should care. I feel like I like the guy. I like the body of work. I think he's great. I think it's awesome that this guy came back. But I also feel like, you know, I just... I, I think everybody should have just kept their mouth shut on the whole situation and let it play out as opposed to like all this dumb shit coming out, you know? That's your hot take? That's my hot take. Do you have a, a normal, a, a rational take? Like there were two uh, Ultimate Warriors. Do you believe that? I don't believe that one. I remember when we were kids, that was like the big thing. Yeah, that was a big thing. Um, that was a huge thing. Uh, I still think um, Sean and Brett are the the best work that's ever happened in the business. <sighs> you know, I... I I want that one day. I want that to come out as as true. I really do. Just just for just to 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 you know, wrestling is wrestling. At the end of the day, yeah. I'm not saying that it is. There are two Vince McMahon's, one with a mustache and one without. Two <laughs> Ultimate Warriors, Jim Hellwig and the Ultimate Warrior, two separate people. Hulk Hogan lives in a mole house. It would have been. <laughs> it would be hysterical if it came out that Vince had an identical twin brother. Vin- Vincenzo, and like, he's like and a dad. Yeah, exactly, and it's like uh, it's like a man of the Iron Mask situation where yeah, the good it. one is kept in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, let's see. This is a good one here. This is from Trust the Process Thirty Four. What's one tradition slash unwritten rule in wrestling you wish you could change? Whether it's a booking principle or something else. Oh man, these are really good questions today. Good questions today, guys. Yeah, one tradition, unwritten rule in wrestling, you wish you could change. Uh, you know what I don't like? The the dumb referee. Okay? The the whole concept that this man is in charge of of officiating. Mm. And if if it's not in his peripheral peripheral peripheral, peripheral, peripheral vision. Peripheral. Peripheral vision. Peripheral. Yeah. His riffle riffle. Uh he can't he can't see anything he sees like a fish you yeah. know if you're a little to the side he, he'll 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 miss it i i think that's really dumb at this point but i understand the theatrics of it i think they could do a better job at it yeah i think uh i think also like and the wwe side having the have traditionally having your hometown guy lose yeah i think that's stupid you know i think let, you know get i get over. it I get it, but sometimes, you know, like let them let them have their win, you know, yeah. like what better feeling than being in front of your fa- friends and family and just like, you know, winning a scripted television program. Pro Wrestling Joe says, Zarian, you would make so much more money if you started an Alex Jones parody podcast about wrestling today coming up on the show on on Wrestling Wars dot com. <laughs> Sean Ross Sapp coming in to talk about the Kentucky turkey killer. How followed long? by followed by Will Washington to talk about Tony Khan and his I don't know. I'm I'm starting <laughs> to hurt my voice and I can't do it. And this is what say, happens. How long can you keep that up? I, I can't keep it up too much because the last time I did this, I, I really I had a real difficult time doing this. <laughs> you I did think, it on a watch along once. Oh, me started. and Harry did yeah. this for like yeah. twenty minutes mm-hmm. on a watch along oh, and I was boy. dead. Mm-hmm. Uh Andrew, why do the Mets suck? That's from K Black. Is that, I mean, I is that one of the girls? Is that one of the girls that works for you? That is no, I don't think so. This I is, think they're uh, just really into it. What happened to the Knicks? Has Matt Men turned into Fat Men? I'm 171 pounds. I'm svelte. Oh, I'm chubby, but I'm six two, so it's okay. You're six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see here. This is from BC Knight. My hot take is Triple H is the second best booker behind Guido currently. I think Ghetto was a uh, fantastic booker from like 2013 to 2019. 2018. I would say he was like booker of the year every year. Uh, I don't know. I I've been I've been a little disconnected. I think I know that New Japan's been a lot better, but I don't know. What do you think? You think Ghetto better than uh, Hunter? I think Prime Ghetto absolutely. Like, Prime Ghetto. Prime yeah. Ghetto is pretty unmatchable, you know, as a booker. Uh, Hunter's a good booker. Tony Khan's a great booker too. Yeah. You know, I just think it's I think it's because. I think Tony Khan is undercredited as being a good booker because there's so there's been so many moving parts over the last four years of uh, AW and all that where he's not going to come into his real prime. I think until 2026, you know, maybe 2025, yeah. where you're going to get like holy shit moments. They're building. They, if you think about AW as a whole, they are building up to holy shit moments in the future because they do have the fans in the palm of their hands. Listen. Like I said before, I never thought I'd see an arena react to a broom the way they did on Wednesday night. Yeah, that shocked you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. All right, let's see here. Oh, uh, this is from BC Knight. Ask Matt Men, do you think a streaming service could actually get Raw or SmackDown? How much would it take for WWE to do that deal? I don't think it's a smart move for them. I don't I, I don't think I, I don't think it's they would be able to generate the ad revenue needed to sustain, you know, a two hundred and fifty million dollar a year show or whatever, you know, the rights fee is for that show. Um, I, I just don't think it's possible with streaming yet. We're, we're a couple of years. There's away a lot that. of there's a lot of pushback right now for the uh, NFL putting a playoff game on, on Peacock yeah. exclusively this year. So, yeah, I've, a lot of people are complaining about it. So that's something for sure. So it's still, I still think it's a long way off. So let's see what we got here. Hold on one second, guys. This is from uh, Big Ben's. Thanks, Big Ben's. Let's see. What is your favorite match step of all time? And are match steps like the NBA dunk contest where everything has been done and no creativity is left? What is my favorite match stipulation? I. I was a big fan of Hell in a Cell for a long time. Okay. Um, I, I, <clears throat> uh, what is yours? Do you have one? I'll I'll tell you mine, and yeah. it's a very meat and potatoes one. It's very it's very simple. Two out of three falls. If it goes to the third fall, it's in a cage. And okay, you know what? Love I, that. Love that. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Great. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Top of my head. Can't get enough of it because you know it always gets in the cage. It's great. Inferno matches. <laughs> How about an Inferno match? Oh, dear. I'm okay with the Inferno match, but you yeah, can yeah. always tell who's going to lose when they're bundled in, like, asbestos. <laughs> asbestos rap. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I got a, a good question. one here. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Do, your, do yours first, Rich. And then and uh, I'm going to throw Kyle. Which movie star would play you in your biopic? Uh, Borat, for sure. Sasha Baron Cohen? Sasha Baron Cohen would play me. Great. Listen, I'm going to go. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to go wild on this one and I'm going to go Jason Momoa. You want Jason you know Momoa what? to play? Why not? <laughs> my, nice. Why not? Yeah. It's my biopic. I get to pick. <laughs> you know who I want? I want Denzel. That's who I want. You want like a 60 year old, 62 year old Denzel Washington? To you know what? I want even something more wacky. I want Don Cheadle. <laughs> Don Cheadle's playing me. Oh, in my biopic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can somebody Photoshop? That? Don Cheadle with Andrew's facial hair and toupee. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I want. I want Don Cheadle to play me. <laughs> Listen, Momoa. Imagine, imagine mm-hmm. a Momoa and Cheadle Matman. Oh, forget it. Be the oh, best. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm too sober for that conversation and to envision that. <laughs> I really am. Good question, Kyle. <laughs> Great question, dude. All right. Uh, I got one for you. Said, oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. Pro Wrestling Joe said to a shame that John Alba isn't a big movie star. He'd be perfect. John Alba would be perfect. But I want I want Don Chittle to play play uh, John Alba as well in his biopic. <laughs> <laughs> Dual role. <laughs> what were you gonna say, MG? 
Oh, I have a question to throw up for you. Yeah, throw it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surely, Tony French Tony Khan will be calling. Let's see. Today Maybe I can get him on the air. Version. Can I get him oh, on the let's air? See what we can do. Let's see. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Let me let me press the buttons. Oh, here we go. Uh, Tony. Hello. Oh, Tony. You've had a busy week. It has been a nightmare for me. Oh no! <laughs> you know, you know what has happened this week. You are the no. scoop master. What happened? What happened this week? I've been kind of out of it. It has been a lot of crazy, crazy information. Can I ask it you some questions? Uh, Can you give me some scoops? Let me ask. Let me tell you. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You tell me. Um, what's happening with CM Punk? Well, he did not appreciate the boulangerie I have set aside for him. Plus, I spilled wine all over his pants. He did not like that at all. He did not like that at all. I wouldn't like that either. How many of those long cigarettes have you smoked today? It has been a rough couple of days. So this is my third one this morning. My cigarette wow. is as long as the extended edition of Lord of the Rings, the <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring. Wow. Are Pretty you a long. Lord of the Rings fan? Absolutely. Incidentally, that is what I am calling my wee wee. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. No, no, no. The Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, do you have anything to say to to the audience? I know a lot of people had questions. Uh, wait, wait, about... wait, 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 wait. Do you know what your wee wee is called? <laughs> what is my wee wee called? The Eye of Sauron. It is a <laughs> giant eye on a very thin tower. Why are you insulting me, Tony? What have I done to you? <laughs> this is how I get my kicks after a long week of work. <laughs> you just call into the show on a Friday internationally? This must be costing you so much money. Oh, it makes me feel young again, like I'm one of the Yerky boys. <laughs> the Jerky? Are you pranking people? Just you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add before I let you go this international call? I can't afford this. I know you're a billionaire. You have a lot of money. You're very successful. I don't have that kind of money. Uh, I got to, you know, this international call has cost me. Anything you want to address to uh, the people? Well, ask me a question and I will give you an answer. Okay. Um, uh, what, what are you looking forward to the most with AEW this year? I am looking forward to... To everything being neatly put together in a perfect little package, because I love little packages, small packages, big packages. Uh, I want CM Punk to come back. I miss him. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite cranky martini. That is, is what this CM stands for this week. Is that what it's? <laughs> He's being a real cranky martini. Is that what you call him when you call him? What do you say Only like when you guys have conversations? What's the phone call like? I go, hello, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Please come on my wrestling show, Philip. I promise I will have all the cake and coffee and candy you could eat. All the finest, the finest French pastries. What, what, kind, of, what kind of pastries do you get? Mom? <sighs> Baguettes, even though so that is more of a bread. Yeah, that is more of a bread, yeah. Apple turnovers. Okay, that's a good one. Napoleons. Oh, Napoleons are good. From my eclairs? Favorite French, my favorite French dictator, yes. Many eclairs. <laughs> Who was your favorite French dictator? Napoleon. Oh, wonderful. <sighs> wonderful. Andrew, you are the Lindsey Graham of podcasters. I, wait, oh. I meant Lindsey Lohan. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've, you've had so much work done. You are so irrecognizable. <sighs> Well, I look forward to seeing you uh, in right New York minute, in September. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll get you back on the show next week. Listen, I, you will always have a place to sit as long as I have a face. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, French Tony Khan. He is raunchy. Did you see that? Did you hear this? I know you stepped out. Uh, my feed cut out. What happened? Oh, he was really raunchy. He's, he's getting nastier every week. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting nastier and nastier, that 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 dastardly Frenchman. <laughs> he's twirling his mustache. As I can't good. believe how many cigarettes that man smokes. Uh, it's not it's not good. It's a, and very, very loud. He's a very <laughs> loud smoker. People you know, want to be discreet in 2023. <laughs> Everybody's discreet <laughs> about their smoking. They're smoking quiet vapes. They're smoking in a corner. Nobody wants to see. He is. I don't even. Ha I could see the smoke coming through the phone. He's doubling down. 
Dublin. <laughs> uh, let's Hello, see Philippe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You got to right. bring me up to speed on, on what he's right. I'll, I'll tell you after later. Here. We're running out of time anyway, so uh, what else do we have? This is from uh, Dom08. If you were starting a new promotion, who would be your top three wrestlers, dead or alive, that you would pick to start it with, and who's the booker? Oh, my God. Hogan? Austin? One. Yep. Uh, uh, the three top, dead or alive? Hogan, Austin... Uh, and uh, I, I need uh, Dwayne the rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've seen this. We've seen it already. It happened. Uh, I mean, I don't know. That's a tough question. You, like, you know, th there's so many different people in different times that did well. Like you, you could argue superstar. Billy Graham could be on it. Bruno. Absolutely. Bruno dusty, a dusty. Ro My wife loves dusty Rhodes. Who doesn't? She loves him. Did you guys watch the documentary together? No, she's been. Uh, oh, do you know what she got me for for my birthday? Maybe. Oh, you do know. You do know. <laughs> she got yeah, me I'm a telling, pair I'm not telling of okay. lizard shoes. She got me crocodiles. Okay, awesome. And awesome. she made a a clipped Ric Flair. Like she made like a video of like different clips of Flair, and then it led to the lizard shoes. That's really cool. Good. Yeah. Uh, she was asking me about them a, a while ago, so I'm glad. Oh, you wonderful. Got them. Thank you. Uh, let's see. This is uh, how long? Uh, this is another one from Dom08. How long do you think MJF holds the belt, and who do you think is next? Also, do you ever think Tony ever puts it on Punk again? Yeah, I can see them doing that again. Um, yeah, I I don't know how how long MJF holds the title. I uh, I don't know who his next feud should be with. I you know whether it's Punk. I I think Darby could be a nice feud for him. Uh, Sting. I want to see him and Sting in a match. Yeah, for sure. Dude. I don't know why. I I, I just <laughs> keep feeling that. I don't know why I, I'm leaning towards that, but I really want to see that. Uh, I don't know. I, I there's so many people, and I don't want it to be the same thing. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's Kenny. Maybe Kenny challenges MJF and beats him for the title. But I don't want to see it be Moxley. I don't want to see it be Hangman. Uh, I I want something a little different. I I maybe Punk, but I don't really want to see Punk as champion either. I don't think he should be rewarded right now. Uh, you're putting him in timeout. That's what French Tony Khan told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think MJF versus Sting is gonna would be a, a five star match, and I'll tell you why. MJF would flop around like Flair the entire time, and I feel like he would oh, live yeah. such a dream. Oh yeah, going up against Sting, you know. Oh, but you know, I didn't even think of that, Rich. I don't, uh, that that makes it even better. Um, and also, you know what? I wouldn't mind it if they did. I know this is like dumb, dumb wrestling fanboy stuff. Let's say Sting beats MJF for that belt, right? Sting turns around and says, hey, I'm retiring on top. And then they do a full-blown mega tournament for the belt again. I don't know. Maybe they would honor Sting like that. You know, it, it they brought that guy back and he really has been there. He really yeah. is there every week. He's at the, <laughs> He's there. He's helping. He's giving his input. Uh, you know, he's blocking people from sneaking in the back when, uh, when tapings are happening, <laughs> you know, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is from major Carver. Do you this think will trigger Andrew? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this will trigger Andrew. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you think if AEW gets a massive influx of money from a new deal that they will bring back? the LED ramps and revamp the sets. Uh, I don't think the sets aren't being revamped for money. Uh, I think that this is just a design that they came up with. Yeah. You know, but I do think they're going to get uh, an influx of money for sure. I think they need to go to 4K. Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing 4K. Well, I, th I mean, like, how cool would it be if they were the first to do like 4K? Doesn't WWE do the 8K camera on the ramp? Uh, that Fox, yeah, on, on Fox. Yeah, they have that, but it's still all downscale to 720p, which is so stupid. Yeah, I think like nuts? they need to... It's weird, because I was watching... I was texting you the other night while I was, we were watching Dynamite, and I was like, These, this this should be shot in 4K. It would look a lot better, you know? I, I could find out. Maybe it is shot in 4K. You know what? I'm going to find out. That's an easy thing for me to find out, if the cameras are 4K cameras. Cool. Or even like 6K, because I feel like... 
eight is still not the standard. Just can't handle that processing power. Um, this is from Hogan. How about you build up Mark Briscoe to win the AEW World Title? You could do that. I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, I love the Briscoes, but I. I don't know how mm. much appeal it would have. You know, would it? Would it? Would it draw more? Would it bring more ratings? You know, you're you're a guy like Max. You're investing in the future with him. He's yeah. young. Uh, he's already. You know, or you have people that are already established. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you could do whatever you. They, they could. They could make anything work. Really, with yeah. proper story. They, they could do anything. Um, you want to do one more? Yeah. We got a good one. Uh, will you will you still expect the June seventeenth location to be the United Center? If the worst case scenario happens, would they announce and run that without Punk, or is there a plan B? Um, I have not heard of any changes to the venue. I have not been told that CM Punk is gone. I have not been told that there's a change to the venue. They obviously were going to announce it last night, uh, uh, Wednesday night. And I guess, you know, maybe in a weird way, they bought themselves more time. And this is another attraction for next week's show. And I, 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 I feel like you got to announce it now, right? June yeah, 17th yeah, yeah. is going to be three in three weeks. They got to sell tickets for that show. Will they? What do you know. think? What? What do you think they're playing? I, you know, honestly, I do think if it's going to be the United Center, they'll still sell it out regardless. But they're going to have to do something special if Punk isn't there. I think he will be. Okay. Yeah, I'm leaning towards it's. It's fine. Sure. Yeah. All right. I think we're done. All right. That's it. Cool, guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, dear. Let's thank Tony, uh, French Tony Khan, for calling into the show. MG, our producer, of course, Rich. Stambolian each and every week with me. I'll be back on Sunday with Wrestling Observer Live. That's it. Goodbye.